it does have a superscription from the noir detective novelist Ross Spencer. And he writes, just ain't no telling where purple jelly beans come from. My guess is a red jelly bean got together with a blue jelly bean, Ross Spencer. Those sunburnt girls who vacation among the antiquities return much too complicated with color slides or with carefully articulated vapid commentary, pale rationales concerning collapsed political systems and herbal souffle recipes. So it is good to be with a woman who doesn't carry a crack pot load of endemic sympathies for a culturally crippled, cripped out crowd of consumer schizophrenics. That kind of woman hooked on junk food psychiatry, but who refuses to eat it in and out. What's that mean? It's really fine to be with a woman whose soul hasn't been chopped up into hamburger whose sense of emotional security doesn't depend on periodicals which worship vultures chewing on the carcass of contemporary art, who doesn't need to be surrounded by Philistine swine herds, ego gratification dollar signs, pop star clones cannibalizing the dead, who had ripped off black blues, scared school teacher poets reciting in a prissy academic monotone, subliterate Generation X, hip hop zombie abortionists of the new age, military freak shows exploiting the poor in carnivals of aggression, high roller capitalist mystics whose greasy gurus running reincarnation scams and scoring a new fleet of Zen Cadillacs. Yeah. <laughs> It's good to be with a woman who doesn't maintain a necessity to care whether or not she sees the ocean between Europe and anywhere. A woman who's cutting across my sight with an imagination she uses to appraise these two cool black fire jelly beans in her American eyes. Sparring with beating a ghost, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you really, all of you have to take one of these with you on your way out the door. Uh, the lexicon of Herbert T. Schmidt Jr., who has, uh, over the years, uh, given birth to, uh, along with a, a couple of uh, radio friends of his, uh, uh, two, two suburban desperados, Arnie Farn and Rot Clancy. And, uh, I was intrigued with uh, the portrait of Arnie Farn, so I wrote one of my own, and I call it, I'll finish with this uh, tonight, this is my last blast, and it's called The Ballad of Arnie Farn, uh, to Miss Jessie. Arnie Farn was a test tube adult. Arnie Farn was conceived in a fringe motel. Arnie Farn inhabited the public cradle of contagious anxiety. Arnie Farn lived in some pretty dangerous houses. Arnie Farn negotiated the avenues of aberrational failure. Arnie Farn walked among the hydrants with Jack Hampton. Arnie Farn viewed the average American as a taxable garbage disposal unit. Arnie Farn discovered Fidel Castro and made him a star. Arnie Farn floated off the coast of Florida with a sensitive boatload. Arnie Farn took one look at Miami Beach and refused to lower the gangplank. <laughs> Arnie Farn witnessed the Angel of Mercy grieving in a gutter with shorn wings and nosebleed. Arnie Farn fell asleep in the roaring 20s. Arnie Farn woke up to the roaring jangle of a clock radio in 1955. Arnie Farn arrived at Grand Central Station wearing Buster Brown shoes. Arnie Farn became a member of one man's family. Arnie Farn was a nursery school dropout and flunked from that moment on all the social amenities. Arnie Farn got a headache. 
Arnie Farn put his hands over his eyes. Arnie Farn didn't want to see Kenneth Patchen murdered by the American Medical Association, the Academy of American Poets, and university sanctioned censorship. Arnie Farn organized religion. Arnie Farn invented popular music. Arnie Farn was a band boy in an all girl orchestra. Arnie Farn went to the little theater off Times Square. Arnie Farn went to the movies. Arnie Farn went to the moon. Arnie Farn, just like Rot Clancy, was a native speaker of Latin. Arnie Farn watched Weldon Keys jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Arnie Farn helped Hart Crane balance himself on the railing of a cruise ship. Arnie Farn posed for Diane Arbus. Arnie Farn shot Liberty Valance. <laughs> Arnie Farn qualified for an NEA grant by printing poetry on nuclear Kleenex. <laughs> Arnie Farn saw National Book Award judges blow it. Arnie Farn condemned the Sunset Palms Hotel. Arnie Farn had the night clerk arrested for decent exposure. Arnie Farn got a job in a mortgage company. Arnie Farn disguised himself as the second coming of Christ. Arnie Farn was crucified by the Wall Street Journal. Arnie Farn advertised for the petrifaction of minorities. Arnie Farn began to believe in civil rights for white people. Arnie Farn wouldn't want you to marry his sister. Arnie Farn was attacked by left-wing social democrats. Arnie Farn was lashed to a steel slab and thrown off the Brooklyn Bridge. Arnie Farn was a great escape artist. Arnie Farm was last seen wearing blackface, driving where he had just been appointed resident confessional poet with affirmative action programmed at a major university in the direction of Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you. <laughs>